The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. It's a delight to see so many people here tonight. I'm excited about this evening. We have a lot of stuff to cover. I'm sure you've got tons and tons of, of questions. I see a tremendous number of people already here, and I know more are coming in because we always have some latecomers. So while we're waiting for our few late people to join us, I'm going to just go over what I call some housekeeping items, um, tell you a little bit how to make the most out of tonight's psychic hour, and also talk a little bit about some great stuff I've got going on right now and uh, how, you can, how you can make the best of it. Um, first of all, the way I run my psychic hours, these are obviously they're live. You get to ask questions. If you have a question that you have on your mind, you want to ask uh, verbally because you will be unmuted, you'll be able to talk, just raise your hand. You'll see that little hand in the box next to your name. Click on that and that will raise the hand. My assistant Lisa is in the chat room and she will be actually uh, being the person who's choosing who to call. And generally speaking, Lisa will call on people who are new to the psychic hour so that the new people get a better chance of being able to ask their question. Um, and also, if she sees in the chat room itself a lot of people asking the same question or something that's related, she'll often call on somebody uh, who's asking one of those questions as well. So don't be shy about it. If you want, you can actually type your question into the chat room. Sometimes Lisa can answer them directly herself too, depending on what the question is. Okay, so you know about raising your hand, you know about using the chat room. When you get called on, I want to know a few things about you. I want to know your name. I want to know where you're calling from. We do get people from all over the world on these calls, so it's really kind of fun to find out where everybody is from. And I want to know what you're most grateful for right now, tonight, in your life. And I also want to know your sun sign. So there's the name, where you're from, your sun sign, what you're most grateful for, and then we're going to get you a chance to ask your specific question. And you can ask a question on anything. And my guides and I are here to channel that information for you. The chart that you see up here on the screen is called a quarterly chart. Every time we meet at our psychic hour, I cast one of these for the hour, put it up here on the screen. And folks, if you are here tonight, then you are in this chart. Quarry charts are absolutely amazing. This chart is good for one hour. It's good for this next hour that we are all together. And this chart can answer all of your questions. I'm also working with tarot cards. My guides use the, both the tarot cards and the astrology chart as a jump off point. And uh, I try to teach a little bit of astrology along the way. Um, to point to different things. And folks, if you don't have a chance to be called on this evening, don't be disturbed because my guides have this interesting way of addressing your question in the middle of answering somebody else's. Believe me, even if they don't hear you, they know you're here, they know you're on the line, and they are addressing your comments and your questions and even the things you're thinking about all through this next hour. So Stay in front of the screen, listen in, and you are going to be absolutely amazed. It's a whole new kind of a Me Too movement here. And it's absolutely amazing how much information you're going to get that's going to be so helpful to you in your personal life. Okay, I think that pretty much covers that. I do want to also add, um, just in case you don't get called on, well, I'm going to give you until 9 p.m. tomorrow evening. It's 9 o'clock here in Eastern Daylight Time. I'm in Florida in the U.S. And I'm going to give you until 9 o'clock tomorrow to email me your one simple question if I don't get a chance to call on you in the next hour. Okay? So everybody here will get one question answered. And most of those questions are even going to be answered in the course of the dialogue that goes on. Now, a couple of things I would like to make announcements on. I've got so many things in the works right now, folks. It's almost got my own head spinning, but it's so exciting. I am embarking upon uh, basically the creation of a teaching website. And a lot of you who have gotten my newsletter, it just went out today and have checked it out. 
have already gone to that site and looked at all the wonderful in-person classes that you're going to be able to pick up and take one lesson at a time right on your uh, smartphone or your, right on your computer or on your television if it's internet capable. The first one of these classes uh, I released last month, it was the tarot class, and tonight is the 30th of September, folks. You have until midnight tonight to still, if you want to study tarot on your own, I'm offering that class until midnight tonight at half price. So if you didn't have a chance to get online and go buy it, do that. And if you have already studied tarot for me or with me, that class is going to be free to you for uh, something like a $3 download fee. It's just amazing. So if you've already studied, immediately contact Lisa and say, hey, I want this class. Tell me how to do it. If you um, don't haven't studied the tarot with me, but you'd like to buy it, it's half price until midnight tonight. So don't miss out on that. Um, you are probably never going to see that price again anywhere. It's it's just amazing. It's well, it's you're you're getting my uh, full tarot video. You're getting my online program. You're getting week by week teaching with me online, and not in person, but in, on on the video, and it is in person on the video. Um, and on the PowerPoints, it, it's just absolutely amazing. You'll have a, a Facebook group you can belong to to practice with other students, and you'll have the ability to email me questions. I mean, how can you go wrong? And right now it's half price, okay? So that's the tarot, and that was I had that on sale all during the month of September. We completed that in August, and it went up in September. Some of you have already got that because I'm recognizing some of the names here, so it's really exciting to see. And I'm, I'm seeing people already making comments on it that, yeah, I got that. I, I've been studying that. So what's coming up in October? Well, October, in case you haven't noticed, is the month we have Halloween. It's not just Lisa's birthday. She's a Libra. All the Libras have birthdays this month. The end of the month, Scorpio comes in right around Halloween, actually a little before, around the 22nd. So all the Libras and a lot of the Scorpios are busy celebrating their birthdays this month. But it's not just your birthday, it's Halloween, alias, Hallowmas, All Saints Day. It goes by a lot of names, and it is, frankly, my favorite holiday of the year. I just absolutely love Halloween. So what could be better than for me to bring out my next class? And my next class is a all of my psychic protection tips gathered in one place, organized for you, and downloaded one tip or one group of tips a month for you to study and work with. And it's cheap, 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 cheap. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, and again, I'm going to suggest you check it out when, you, when you're when you done with tonight and you go over to my website. Please look at it because you're going to look at that and say, oh my goodness, I can just get one of these tips to work with. And by the end of the month, I will have it mastered it. Or sometimes it's a little group of tips if they all pertain to the same thing. And then what's happening in November? Um, in November, my friends, I am releasing uh, something that people have been asking me for for years, um, my Kabbalah Pathworking, which up until now has been a kind of a self-study. I have a Kabbalah Pathworking book that you can purchase, and I have all of the paths on my website that you could listen to. So you could study it on your own, but you didn't really get the uh, advantage of direct interaction with me unless you could take it online with me. And I only offered it every couple of years and it was always on a specific night. So it was difficult for some people to attend. Well, that program is going live and everybody everywhere in the world is going to be able to gain enlightenment with that program. It's coming out. It's basically pretty amazing. And another program that's coming out is my Evolution of Consciousness webinar series. A lot of you took those webinars a few years back when I taught them. I, I presented one a month. Well, that's coming out in a year-long class, one a month. Again, that's in, in the November, December period. And then as we go into the new year, I've got more coming, and I'll tell you more about that. But on your calendar, please put my Psychic Development class. I'm teaching again live starting in the, in January, it's towards the end of January, you'll see that date on my website. If you want to develop your own psychic abilities, best chance you'll ever get is to take those classes with me right here online in the comfort of your own living room. 
Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I know that sounded like a long-winded sales pitch. I just had so much to say, and I'm, I'm so, so excited about this. Um, folks, when you go to my website and, uh, and you click over to look at these classes, or if you click through the newsletter, those of you who have the newsletter, it'll click you straight through to this website. Uh, the website hasn't shifted over to the new website yet, but you can still access the new one through the newsletter. So if you check it out through that newsletter, you are going to be absolutely amazed. It's, uh, it's my dream come true. My dream from 35 years ago come true. It's here. <laughs> okay. I just had to live long enough and do the work long enough to get to the point where the technology could, could actually do what I saw in my mind or what my guides gave me. At any rate, it's here and it's so exciting. And Lisa, by the way, can tell you a lot more about it. <laughs> okay. So if you have more questions on any of that, just, just launch the, them on her in the chat room. She'll be glad to tell you how to get there or how to sign up for it or, 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 or. Okay. Now that I've given Lisa that work, I'm going to get to the main work of tonight's session. Folks, it's time to ask those questions. And I'm sure there, I'm already seeing bunches of hands up in the, uh, in the, in the, in, on my screen. And I'm sure there are questions in the chat room, which I'm not seeing, but Lisa is. And uh, just a reminder, your name, where you're calling from, your sun sign, what you're most grateful for, and then the question. Okay. And a lot of you just keep listening because I'm going to be able to give you so much information that pertains to you while I'm answering someone else. Lisa, who's, who's our first victim? And boy, is that... Is that appropriate this Halloween month, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Our very first victim tonight is going to be Kelly. Dead. Hello, Kelly. Hi, Hi how are y'all? Okay, I'm going to turn your sound down a little bit here because you're so loud we can't hear you. Oop, that didn't work. Let's see. How do I manage to turn the sound? Kelly, can you lower your sound a little bit on your end? You're blasting us out, and we're getting feedback. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I could hear that. I could hear that better. Okay. I just couldn't just discern your words because the feedback was covering. Okay, Kelly. First, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Virginia. I'm a Libra, and tonight I am grateful for my friends and family. Happy birthday, Kelly. This is Libra birthday month. <laughs> Thank you. You know, uh, you, here you guys are, Libra. All you Libras, listen up, because this is your birthday month, and some of you Scorpios too, because a lot of you have some of this stuff going on too. Um, Libra is showing up on the sixth house cusp in our horary chart. What that says is Libra has a lot of things going on in their mind in terms of their house, their home, their health, their day-to-day -day life and getting things organized and under control. Um, basically, all of a sudden, you guys are deciding that you're going to get on top of the world, organize it, make it into the next year, and get health, home, family, and daily activities, including pets if you have them like me, all in ship-shape condition so that you can start to achieve and accomplish the things you've been working on that you seem to be stalling out on. How am I doing, Kelly? Uh, you nailed that one on the head. Yep. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> and by the way, that wasn't even my guides. That's, that is worry astrology. It says it right here. Okay. Now I also want to talk a little bit more about this. Um, those of you who are Libras, uh, Mercury is really close conjunct. Friends are really important right now. So you're going to be spending a lot of time with friends coming up, probably birthdays with friends. Um, you also have this conjunction to Venus in here. Uh, which is the Scorpio. So, you know, if you're married or if you have a lover, you can pretty much expect some good birthday stuff with that person as well. And by the way, this could be an opportunity to move that relationship, that love relationship into a better communication area where there is more of a friendship, which is kind of fun. Okay. Um, Kelly, what is your specific question? Um, I would like to know about my guides. Can you give me any information on oh, my guides? Well, you know, I'm going to move away from the chart here because this is more of a personal specific one for Kelly, but I'm going to be talking about things in general. Um, first off, and Kelly's already aware of this because her guides are telling me she is, 
But, you know, you have many guides, folks. Uh, a lot of people think they only have one guide because they relate to their higher self as a guide. And each one of us has one higher self. And when we hear or get inner motivation from that higher self, we often feel like we're being guided. Um, but that higher self is actually a higher part of your own consciousness. It's your, your soul coming into life, if you will. It is you, but it's you on a higher level. Um, many of us have guardian angels, but not all of us. Angels, folks, are an entirely different origin. They're an entirely different species of being. Not all of us have guardian angels or any angels around us, um, but many of us do. So you only really find out in, in getting a reading if you've got an angel. And, uh, and you are aware, Kelly, I'm sure, because my guides tell me you feel your guides and, uh, <laughs> and you do have an angel around you. And I don't know his name. I think it's Michael um, because he's very fiery. It's a, it's a male. It's a, not a female angel. It's a male. But again, that's unusual. Not everybody has an angel, okay? All of us have a life guide, and we all have a protector guide. And that guide has usually been with us through many lifetimes, uh, literally non-physical beings that have been with us forever and will continue to be with us forever. And it's almost like they're an extension of us. They're a part of us, and they help to guide us and keep us on track if we listen. Now, many of us, in addition, have a whole cloud of guides around us, because our life guide and protector guide will bring in a guide if we're learning a new project. All we have to do is ask. They'll bring a guide to help us make a choice or a decision. All we have to do is ask. It's amazing. When we ask our higher self and our guides, you know, I need help with this one. Can you bring somebody to help me? Bam, you get a guide. It's absolutely amazing how much help we get both from the other side and from this side when we reach out and ask. And, uh, you know, so Kelly, you know you have... Uh, your angel who's a guide. Um, we think he, I'm not sure, but I think he's Michael because I'm hearing the M and I know he's fiery because I turned that card up for him. The wands is a fire card in the tarot. Um, I also feel very strongly an old, old man around you. And it's interesting because I initially was going to say this is a grandfather. And I do think you have a grandfather, a father in spirit that feels like a grandfather who is one of your guides. Um, I'm hearing a strong G around him. But I'm also feeling that you have another guide, and I, I'm getting this long beard and a robe. So I'm thinking one of your guides is, you know, he kind of looks like an alchemist or like a Merlin. Um, now, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that because I'm not hearing that, but I'm seeing him visually, and he kind of looks like that, okay? Hmm. Any other questions on that, Kelly? No, something to think about. I, um, Michael makes sense to me. I, I, I think I captured that in a, in a dream before. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's cool. I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> okay. And by the way, they're telling me that the best way for you to connect with your guides, you mentioned dreams, is in dreams. And they're saying that, and this is something you need to keep an eye out for. Normally, you're a good listener. And you do get the information from your guides, and you're usually actually aware even when you're getting it, because it, even though it's in your voice, in your mind, it, it, feels, it feels like it's guidance, so you get it. But the times that you need the guidance the most, when there's a crisis or when there's uh, major stress points, you shut down and you don't get it. So they're saying, you know, Sandy, tell her that when she really needs that guidance, she's got to learn to calm down and be, be accepting of it to get it. Okay. Okay. Good thank luck. Thank you girl. so much. And thank you. <laughs> thank you. Question to start with. I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you. And Lisa, who's next? All right. The next victim for tonight is going to be Judy. If I can get her unmuted. <laughs> Judy, it says yourself. Hello. There you go. Hey, Judy. Hi. Can you, you should be able to hear me now. I can, loud and clear. Okay, very good. Well, um, my name is Judy, as you know. I'm here in the high desert, and I am most grateful for all of my friends. And like other people this month, this, well, upcoming month, October, is my birth month, which is Saturday. So I thought I would leave the door open for you to tell me whatever I need to hear. <laughs> very good. Well, first of all, Judy, um, the same thing holds true for you, as I had said to Kelly, that, you know, you're really moving into or looking forward to this next year. By the way, happy birthday, girl. 
Um, but Thank you. To this next year is being able to really get a handle on things. And if, in your case, it's not just your own health. You really want to get a handle on um, other people's health. And notice I said people's. It's not just one person. You have several people around you who have health issues that are strongly on your mind. And you also have issues at work where there are, uh, you know, there, there are conflicts. There are, you know, there, there are dealing with this boss and this one said and that one said kind of issues. And you're kind of looking at this and saying, you know, I want to see my way through this turbulence in my life because I want to get my life back again. Okay. So what I'm seeing you doing is organizing both those things at work and you're organizing those things in the family and friends. And you're starting to kind of put a, a relative importance uh, on each thing. And the one, the thing that comes at the top level of importance is you. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. I think you're, you're finally, I, I, I'm not going to ask this, but in my mind, I'm asking, well, how old are you? And my guys are laughing at me because, <laughs> because right now you are learning something which I was probably about 27 or 28 when I learned. So you're, you're coming to learn this a little bit late in life. Okay. Cause you're a little older than that. Um, but the bottom line is that you're learning that it's okay for you to put yourself first. In fact, there are many instances in life, and right now you're facing a whole lot of these, where if you don't put yourself first, you will not be capable of resolving these issues that are around you. You're not going to be capable of balancing out the conflicts in your family. You're not going to be capable of figuring out who to help and who not to help. You're not going to be capable of standing up to these people at work who aren't, who, who are creating the turmoil or picking and choosing who's going to stay your friend and who's not going to stay your friend because you're in the midst of doing all of those things. And it, the thing is, is that when you put yourself first and you say, number one, what is going to be best in this particular, take each situation individually, what's going to be best for me relative to this situation? What's the best resolution for me? Second, relative to this situation, what's the best resolution for my immediate family, the people who count, whose lives can affect me. And it's really amazing when you, when you reorient it from that perspective, instead of giving away your power to everybody else and letting them tell you what to do, or what you should be doing. When you take that center stage, all of a sudden, all of the decisions line up and they get to be so much easier. Please try that. I think you're going to be amazed. Um, yeah. Say the last six years, I have definitely had to put myself first just based upon the change in the family dynamics of my brother moving in with my mom and stuff. And as far as the health issues go, I don't know anybody with health issues. However, um, maybe I'm just unknown to their health issues, and maybe that hasn't been divulged to me yet. It's, yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> uh, okay. It's going to be. And, um, yeah, I do, I do put myself in a situation as far, okay, what's the best? you know, resolution for me, like you were saying, you know, what makes me feel, you know, better about, you know, solution A or solution B. And there's always a stronger feeling of which one's best for me. And I go with it. Yeah. And as long as you do that, that and that's new. Okay. okay. They're telling me that's new. And that for you is a game changer. It's a whole life shift. Okay. And everything in your life is starting to move into a new direction, including your relationship with your family, your relationship with those people at work, your relationship with the friends, everything is starting to line up. And it feels like, you know, you've been on this downward journey, which has often been sort of depressing and aggravating. And it's already hit that bottom. It's turned around. It's coming back up. And as it's coming back up, you're, you're, it's getting easier and easier and easier to make these decisions. Um, there's going to be a shift soon uh, between brother and, and is there another sister there? But it feels like it's brother and mother, but there could be another sister there too. Yes, I have two yeah. older sisters and one older brother. Okay, and there's going to be, I mean, this family dynamics, um, they're not done. <laughs> okay, and... I hope, I hope there's a change for the best. Well, remember though, the only change that's going to be the best for you is when each decision is made by you looking at it, what's my best decision for me and for my immediate family. Okay. Because the, there's family politics. We're looking at politics. There yes. is all of you, all of you Libras, Aries, Capricorns, and Cancers, pay attention to this one. 
Sun and Mercury here are in a hard aspect to Pluto and part of fortune. This is politics and Saturn. Saturn's in the house of money, other people's money. Pluto's in the house of travel. So a lot of these people are distant from you physically. So you're like, well, what could I do? They're not nearby. But, you know, um, it, sometimes it's going to feel with the advent of technology that they're like right there because they're right at the other end of the phone. They're in your face. And you are having to make some real major, your Earth is in Aries, that's impl impl implied. And the energy outlet for this is communicating with the family and communicating your needs to the family and finding out, keeping your finger on the pulse of that family. Now, some of you, Libras, Aries, Capricorns, Cancer, some of you, your family is your friends. Some of you, your family is the people you work with. Some of you, your family, like me, is your pets, your, your dogs, your cats, your horses. So, you know, family is different, but we all have our family. And right now, if you are a Libra, a Capricorn, an Aries, or a Cancer, there is enormous focus on family and all the things that are connected to family, be those health issues, be those uh, you know, family politics, be those angling for who's got the money or who's going to help this one or who needs this one, who's trying to manipulate this one into being the caretaker or, 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 okay. And uh, my friend, you're going to get to experience it all. It's brewing. <laughs> it's, it's what, oh, it's brewing, you say? It's brewing, yes, it's brewing. Uh, you know, you see. You are, start, you, you are starting to say something that you see something with mother or brother or another sister. Right. What and, did you the, 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 going? the politics, the family politics are shifting there. You know, everybody's okay. cool when mom moved in with, with brother. Okay, well, he's going to... No, no bro, bro, brother moved in with 85-year-old mother six years ago. Okay, well, brother moved in with mother, and everybody's everybody's looking at that and saying, okay, well, that's a done deal. You know, he's, he's already manipulated her and put her in the position where he's going to be the inheritor, and he's going to take care of her, and she's going to take care of him. But one of the sisters is getting involved, and the tables are turning. The seesaw is shifting. That's what's going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my other, yeah, my other two sisters are much more closer to her distance wise than me, and yeah, they have, you know, been around, you know, to help just because they're you know like five miles from where she's at. I'm like over seventy, so. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be interesting to watch all these little because mom is getting you know six years ago mom was still relatively young, now she's eighty five uh -huh. and pushing the older. And, right. the, and I don't know, and I'm sorry to go here, folks, but I may as well for everybody. You know, um, I don't know if mom has money, but mom doesn't even have to have money. There's something very interesting that happens when a mother gets into this older area. Um, kids have this way of always feeling like the other kid got more of mom's love than they did. So there's the same kind of fighting over a mother uh, between people when mom is at the end of life that there isn't a group of puppies over a teat <laughs> okay and you know we can use mom has uh mom needs me we can use mom has money we can use all these different things as an excuse but the bottom line is we all wish we had more of her love than any of us got you know um and this is this this conflict is beginning to increase for you okay and what's interesting is because of your distance from it, geographically, you're going to see it better. Okay, you're going to have a better objectivity to it. And then you're going to have to make your mind up whether to get involved and take action or whether to keep your distance and just allow it to play out. And remember what my guides told you initially. Start from the point of what makes me feel best. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. Good luck and uh, and have a real happy birthday month. I think there's going to be a Thank lot you. of family around you this month, and I don't know if that's the family coming to visit you. You're going to visit them, or if it's the family of choice, because I think. Well, you if they, if if they come out to visit me, I'd be surprised because I lived out here for 30 years, and it's always too hot, too cold, too far. Yeah. So. So it's, it's going to be that family of choice then, and see. Okay. And that's part of the choices you're making, too. Am I going to surround myself with family of choice or family family? You know, there, there, there's interesting things happening here for you. Good things, though. Enjoy. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Lisa, who is next on our list? All right. And the next person is going to be Carrie. And she's up here twice. So it's going to be a 50-50 chance. Not that one. 
Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Nice to meet you, Carrie. Hi there, I'm uh, Leo and uh, I live in uh, Sonoma, California and I am a recent widow and prior to my husband's passing I lived a normal life of children and husband and household and work and since my husband has passed away I was just this wife who wanted to speak to my passed away husband and now I'm a Claire audience in two months and I'm like just I've learned my uh, uh, three of my spirit guides I may have more they're very powerful and they're protecting my stupidness <laughs> and uh, I just I'm just um, I'm so grateful I'm so grateful for knowing there is so much more I'm just overwhelmed I was taken on a astral travel by my guide because my husband told a psychic here in my area that he wanted me to see what uh, he was seeing and my sister who was doing a Ouija board said he'll be there at 2.30 and sure enough I woke up at 2.30 and I had been on a beautiful journey with my spirit guide but here it is three months later I still haven't really dreamed of my husband and I just sort of want to talk about spirit guides and talking to your deceased loved ones and gratitude Okay, well, the first thing, you're, you're, you're going to love part of this and you're going to hate part of this. First thing I want to do, though, is to give you my deepest condolences. Um, you know, even even when you have, uh, you know, any prior warning uh, expectation, it's, it's you know, lose, losing your life mate is losing your life mate. It's just, uh, you know, it's it's great that you have the relationship with him, that you are still able to connect and that you've been able to, um, you know, find that, uh, I'm going to say that that's solace and take that next step to recognize that, no, we don't die at death. We continue. We can make that connection. That's a tremendous help, but it still isn't the same as reaching out and touching somebody across the breakfast table. So my deepest condolences, please. Um, Thank you. I, I totally know that the night times are just horrific between missing him and, uh, wishing for his body to be here and I've got numerous EVPs from him in my car but recently my spirit guide told me to knock it off in the car so <laughs> yeah. no more of that <laughs> and I, I want to say um, I think it's great that you have such powerful guidance right now I also think it's great that your husband in life must have been a protector my guide is saying oh yes because in, in death he also is that protector so at this time during his transition and to the other side in your transition to opening up your psychic senses, you've had a little bit of protection around you that has been gifted to you. And that's absolutely wonderful because you see the things you are doing aren't healthy. <laughs> okay. Ah. <laughs> first thing, please, Can you give me some guidance? Well, the first thing is please tell your sister to put the Ouija board away. They're very, very, very scary. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. There's we a, think we're coming from sweetness and light, so it's all okay. No, it's not. It's not. I, it's like somebody telling me a long time ago, you know, but I put myself in the white light. How come I got possessed, you know? Well, the white light just attracted them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it's not enough to just say I'm a good person. The, the bad guys on the other side scout for good people because they're the dumbest and the easiest to get, <laughs> okay? The, the I, time, folks, the time when people are most vulnerable, and we're getting into the month of Halloween, so this is a good time to talk about this. And incidentally, our next psychic hour is going to be on October 28th. So that's two days or three days before Halloween. So we're going to have a chance to really get into Halloween. But um, just bear in mind that, you know, when people are just beginning to develop their psychic senses, there's always this, wow, it's so exciting, and they want to reach out as fast as they can. And that's, I mean, that's wonderful. Nobody wants to, to shut that down because we want you to have that, that access. But that is when you are most vulnerable to the dark things that are on the other side because, you see, you don't yet know how to protect yourself. It's kind of like a kid who's just learning to swim. You put that kid in a pool that the water only goes up to their chin so they can put their feet on the ground. 
You do not throw them in the ocean that's deep and has waves. Do you see the difference? <laughs> the thing is, is that in the psychic world, all we have is the ocean with the deep waves, unless you study. So guess what? Uh, my friend, it's wonderful to know that you're opening up with the rapidity that you are, but I am going to strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you do as much reading and reading about protection as you can. Um, it would be a great time for you to get my psychic protection tips, <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> um, if you don't study with me in January, then at least go and find somebody where you live and study psychic protection and psychic development with them, okay? Get a handle on it. Um, I, I actually get a lot of students who come to me um, because they, like you, have jumped into the mediumship end of things, which really opens you to anything out there. And then realize, oops, <laughs> you know, uh, here I am in the ocean and, uh, you know, it's like being in the ocean with a boat without a paddle, you know, what do I do next? And so I get a lot of people who are very gifted who come to me to study to actually learn how to control their abilities so that they, you know, okay, I've already done this. I've already gotten into this situation. Um, how am I going to shut the door now? And what I'm going to tell you, it's, it's a whole lot easier to put the uh, protection and the boundaries in before you get into that position. So you're at that time right now. Thank God your husband's been hanging around and he's been doing that protection. You have strong guidance and they've been doing double work, but you can't always count on that. You have to learn to do this yourself and you need the foundation. You need the basics. You need to learn to do things like meditate. You need to learn to both open your psychic senses, but also shut them down. You need to open and close because you need to be in control. Um, when, you know, when your guide said, no, don't you know, let your husband do this now, send him away. Okay. Well, you need to be able to do this on your own. Hun, I'm going to talk to you in a half an hour. Let me drive now. You see, that's the, you need to actually have that kind of conscious control that keeps you in control of your connection to your psychic senses and the world of spirit. I hope that helped. Thank you. Um, so praying is not enough. Praying is a good start. Praying helps you to connect with your loved ones on the other side. It helps you to form that communication with your higher self and your guides, God. But it's not going to give you protection. Okay. Okay. It's something you've got to, you know, everybody. Let me let me put this to you in in very basic terms. Everyone has an aura. You've heard about that. Everybody has an energy field around them. That energy field has a shell, like a little wall around it. But in the average person, as soon as you feel empathy or you feel fear or you're really concerned about somebody or you're intimidated, any, any, any one of these massive human emotions, that shell develops little holes in it, okay? And anything is going to be able to get in and out. So when we talk about psychic protection, we're talking about you taking your energy field and strengthening it and setting it up so that you can choose what you want to open to and what you don't want to open open to. You see, you're the one who's in control here, not the world outside. The world inside is in control. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yes, yes I started hearing other voices and other things, and I started thinking, eh, I better figure this out before I get too oh, far this. into I didn't realize I was clairaudient at all. Yeah, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And uh, and by the way, you're not just clear audience, you're also clear buoyant. You're going to start seeing some things that are going to be a little bit weird. You're clear sentient. We have all the clairs. Uh, clear sentience is the ability to feel energy, feel vibration, and you already are doing that. Clear buoyance is when you're able to see things, and sometimes with your physical eye, sometimes with your inner eye. Clear audience, you're able to hear them. Again, sometimes with your physical ear, sometimes with your inner ear. Telepathy, you're hearing thoughts, it's inside your head only, it's, you're hearing the other people's thoughts. Um, channeling, where you're actually hearing the thoughts and the vibrations, sometimes getting the feeling from your guides. These are all abilities. We all have clear aliens, being able to tell from a smell that other people don't smell, but you do, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing you should be around. And you've already experienced a lot of these. The clairs, you're opening all the clairs right now. And you, do you see that for me? Pardon? You see that for me personally? Yes, I absolutely do. That's for you personally. And <laughs> okay. you can get a handle on Thank it you so in order to protect right from the beginning because it's all happening. And what was the stimulation was the shock of your husband's death. 
to reaching out to him. And then once that started to open, you just let it flow, which is great. But learn. Don't just be a sitting duck. Learn. Okay, because your guides aren't going to be doing the heavy, heavy work protecting you forever. Sooner or later, they're going to say, it's your turn. You do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I'm really relying on them now. Thank you so much for your information. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. Good luck. And Lisa, who is next? All righty. Our next person tonight is going to be Ellen. If I can get you unmuted. There you go. Hello, Ellen. Hello, I am uh, in Florida and I'm a Virgo and I guess like everybody else on the call, I'm most grateful for my friends and um, family. So my question is, it's about sleep that I, I sleep well and I sleep long, but it never seems like it's enough. No matter how long I sleep, I wake up and I'm tired. Mm. And now I'm going to have to ask you a couple of questions here. Um, okay. Do you sleep alone or do you share your bed? I sleep alone. Okay. Because uh, my, the reason I wanted to rule out that, many times people who have difficulties sleeping is because while you're sleeping, the person in the bed next to you is not sleeping well. So, but we can oh. that out, okay? Because uh, <laughs> people do connect, especially if they're in the same bed. The next uh -huh. question I'm going to ask you is do you have a, a habit of either talking to a friend or a relative within an hour or so before bed, or do you have a habit of putting like on the news before bed or something like that before you head to, head to sleep? Mm, definitely don't have news on before I go to sleep. Right. And I don't usually talk to um, physical people before I go to sleep. Okay, I always say to people, and this is one of my psychic protection tips that you'd find, uh, between an hour and two hours before sleep, Folks, you should not be answering the telephone, okay? Um, and, and not unless you're, you're like you're the person in charge of this ill family member or something like that. You have to leave the phone on. Otherwise, turn that phone right off um, because other people do connect with us while we sleep. And that can, I mean, we can be asleep. We can be sleeping, you know, nine, ten hours. But if we've got a connection to somebody and they are stressed out or worried or confused and things are going on, we're not going to be getting sleep because we're 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 moving into their psychic space that's not comfortable. Okay. Mm -hmm. so the, and the reason I'm telling you this is you may you may say, well, that does happen sometimes. Okay. Um, the other thing is, if you're if you have none of those things going on and you still are not able to get that restful sleep, what I'm going to do is say next place to look is at your physical body itself, especially because you are a Virgo and Virgo always deals with health issues. Um, are you somebody who carries the tension in your body? If you are, you can take that nice warm shower or bath before bed. That will calm you down and get you grounded. Uh, a salt bath, putting a handful of salt, will ground the energy before bed. Um, doing some meditation or yoga or listening to like a self-help uh, meditation before sleep that will introduce you into a calming sleep will also help you to bring to that. Um, a lot of times, especially when the sign Virgo or Pisces is involved, because both that's the health axis, sometimes the physical body itself has either got aches or pains or stresses that it's carrying where it's just not allowing you to get to the depth of sleep. Here's what's going on, and this everybody should be paying attention to this. If you are sleeping, you know, like you're saying, getting enough sleep and you're sleeping enough hours, but you're still waking and you don't feel rested, what that says is that you're not getting REM sleep, okay? You're not, you're not getting into that dream sleep where we recharge because that's when we recharge. Um, scientists will talk about sleep as going in, in different stages. You know, there's alpha, there's beta, beta we, we drop into deeper and deeper levels. And what most scientists aren't realizing because most of them don't consciously astral travel is that all of us during REM sleep and the deeper levels, we leave the body and we astral, okay? And that's normal. All of us leave our bodies at night during the deeper levels of sleep. And when we leave that body, our energy body moves to another plane where it's literally like sticking the plug in. We get a recharge, okay? Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. people, I'm sure some people on this call will just, you know, like their eyes just opened and they said, wow, that's it. You know, um, some people can train themselves 
to go into that deep level of sleep instantly, recharge, and come back out. We call those five-minute power naps. Some people can do that, and that's enough sleep to get them through the whole day because they recharged. Now, mm. you're not getting into that level of sleep. That's what's happening. And what stops you from getting into that level of sleep is nervousness, body tension, physical illness, mental jar, you know, jargon that's going on with other people while you're trying to sleep that are holding you from those deeper levels. You're getting the, the picture here? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So now armed with that, you can protect yourself. You know, um, when I travel like into hotel rooms that are uh, foreign to me, I will often bring my own pillow so that it's not got other people's brain waves on it. Okay. I will mm -hmm. take some salt. I really do this folks. I'll lift up my sheet and I'll put some salt under the sheet on the mattress so that I'm not laying, I'm not pickling myself. I'm not laying in salt. Um, salt is the only really perfect grounding element. And I'll often, if it's, if there's a lot of stuff going on, if I'm teaching a chaotic kind of seminar, I'll put a clockwise salt circle around my bed before I get into it. And then everybody else in the seminar can have a blast and I'm going to sleep like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a lot of times what I'm saying is our sleep can get interrupted and interfered with by other people. And if you're very sensitive right now, um, especially now, we have so much um, stuff going on in the airwaves in our world. And those of us who are very empathic, and most of you on this call are, or telepathic, that means you pick up thoughts, are hearing that mental chatter and that frenzy and that anger that's being thrown all over the place, especially mm. here in the U.S. And, you know, you don't even have to know those people to, to realize that the that psychic ocean is not it's not still and nice and soft it's it's a, it's this rough wave storm and we just don't want that in our space when we sleep it's going to stop us from achieving a decent night's sleep so all mm -hmm. on this call please protect yourself before you go to bed at night isolate your thoughts do not do not um connect in to the mass consciousness of that crazy you know stuff that's going on that's not who you are okay mm -hmm. <laughs> i hope that helped yeah, it does very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Consider that a, a get better sleep class, you know, encapsulated into about seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you. That was a great question. I want to thank you very much for, for asking it. I think it's going to benefit a lot of people on the call right now. And Lisa, who is our next questioner? All right, our next person is going to be Kathy. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Can Hello. you hear me? Yes, I can now. Oh, perfect. Okay, I am um, Kathy from, I'm a Scorpio and I'm from Calgary, Alberta, uh, Canada. And I am most grateful for my health and my dog. I'm with you on the dogs. <laughs> Kathy, I'm going to ask you to mute your mic. Like, um, while I'm talking, because you've got some weird background noise coming in there, okay? How, how do I mute? Just, just how, click on the mic, and it will mute, and then when you, when you want to talk again, just re-click it. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's perfect. Yeah, I don't know what that background noise was, but it was, uh, it was a little bit disconcerting. Okay, um, first I want to talk about Kathy being a Scorpio. Kathy, in this chart, uh, Scorpio showing up um, in the tail end of the sixth house, and most of the seventh house, which is the house of relationship. So it would not be surprising if you folks who are Scorpios, Taurians, Arians, uh, not Arians, Aquarians, or Leos are either thinking about moving into a new profession or starting a business with a friend, colleague, mate, or making a change of residence with a mate. I mean, there's some big stuff going on in your lives. But because, watch this, this is a grand cross that you're all experience. You see that big square I'm making with my cursor? You're all experiencing this grand cross. So even though you've got all these ideas, nothing much is going to be happening about all this stuff right now. Um, you're, you, this is the idea time. This is the planning time. It's not the action time. So this is a great time to look at all the options and, and add it all up. Okay? Um, but seriously, you've got all kinds, because Uranus is involved with this, makes all kinds of opportunities coming up relative to changes you might want to make in your home or your work or your relationship. 
and Jupiter in the relationship house is very, very nice. This could indicate a new relationship or an expansion in a good way of an old relationship. Okay, now what is your specific question? Okay, um, I'd like to know why I have such a strong bond with my pets, um, but I can't get that from people and feel awkward around people, especially men. Um, I don't feel a connection with any friends or family, parents, grandparents, or acquaintances at all. And I have a lot of anxiety around my mom, which only just started about eight years ago. And um, she has no interest in my life whatsoever, and I always have to attempt to call her. So I just want to know if this would change in the near future. Okay. Again, mute yourself. Okay, the first thing I want to say is that this, remember I said there's a connection between um, Scorpios and their mates or their colleagues or whatever, that forming businesses or whatever, that could happen because of the connection here between the seventh house and the sixth house. Well, the sixth house also rules pets. <laughs> so you might be thinking of moving with your pets. You might be thinking of opening up, you know, a pet sitting business or doing that on the side or doing more with your, your animals. Um, but what's interesting is when you brought the animals out, this is perfect because all of you Scorpios right now should be feeling very strong connection if you have pets to those pets in the house. Now, you would also ask why the super strong bond with your pets. Um, and, you know, I want to say to begin with is that in, in this chart, remember, this is ask, a, answering this for tonight, not, not this isn't your natal chart. This is the question for tonight. But this talks about a closeness that you would have had um, to a male figure in your childhood. Uh, probably a father, could have been a grandfather. And it also shows kind of a, I don't actually want to say a tug of war, but there was not a real unity between the feminine and the masculine people in your early home environment. So what did you connect with? Uh, I.e., if you, if you had a chance, it would have been to connect more with the uh, father figure, but the mother figure is between you and the father figure. And so that didn't really happen the way it should have happened. So what did you connect with was the animals, was the pets, was the, you made the greater connection to what, to what you were able to connect with. There's nothing wrong with that. I see that as perfectly fine. And I think the big thing, please get me with this. I'm a little bit unusual. I do not think that people need to conform to social norms just because the society says they need to. I think you need to conform to yourself and your own needs. And if you're more comfortable with a household of pets, then that's what you should have. If you're more comfortable spending time with dogs, with cats, than in your job, you should have. You should be working for a vet, or you should be a vet, or you should do an at-home pet sitting business. You should surround yourself with the things that make you feel comfortable. And instead of feeling there's something wrong with you, you should say, "I'm so grateful. I've understood myself." And what's so interesting is when you begin to accept yourself and your own needs and what makes you feel comfortable, all of a sudden you're going to start to find it easier to relate to people and even men, because guess what? You will be comfortable with yourself. So the bottom line as to why you're not comfortable with other people, why you're shy and why you're not comfortable, especially with men is because you're not comfortable with yourself. And going back into that uh, childhood stuff, which may not be as accurate as if I was looking at your natal chart, but this really talks about you're not being able to form those relationships with men in your life, even though you had an emotional connection because mom was kind of stuck in between. And then as you grew older, mom got her own life and really just is too self-absorbed. And that's what I see here, too self-absorbed. Not that she has it in for you, not that she doesn't like you, but frankly, she has found somebody else to fulfill her needs and doesn't need you to fulfill her needs. When that other person is no longer around, and this is no longer not any different than when you were a little kid, when that other person is no longer around, she will turn to you and she'll want you to take care of her again. And at that point, you're going to have to look and say, do I want to be the caretaker of somebody who might need me, but is so self-absorbed that they really have nothing to give to me? Okay. Did that answer your question, I hope? Maybe. Yes, that actually answers a lot of my questions. Um, yeah, I came from a big family, so there was all four, three girls and then me, and then three boys. 
and there was a huge uh, sever in the family with just the boys hung out with my dad and the girls were supposed to hang out with my mom. But my mom and dad split up and then I came very close to, not really close, but closer than anything to my dad later in life. And then he died, so yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, my mom is now um, getting a lot of assistance from my sisters who are a lot more wealthy than me. Um, so she, she takes it from them, basically. But she's very right, right. Um, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense with the pets because my, my, we always had a lot of pets in my family. And I, always, I feel like love for my pets, but I don't feel love for everybody else ever. Like nobody at all. Well, there's every possibility that at some point, because this says it right here, Jupiter's in the seventh house. There's every possibility that if you allow yourself to be happy with who you are and don't think you're supposed to be somebody else or have to do for somebody else, heck, if your mother doesn't call you, you don't have to call her, you know? That's that's one of her rules. You don't have to obey that rule. Make your own rules. Um, the thing is, is that as you become more comfortable with yourself, you may actually attract somebody who loves his pets just as much as you love your pets. Wouldn't that be fun? And then you can raise pets together. And I've got to tell you, that's possible because I've done it myself several times. Doing it right now, it's great. I love it. <laughs> Never had kids, but I absolutely love dogs. I'm like you. So, thank you um, very much. We appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. And uh, Lisa, I think we have time for one more person here. So, who's next? All righty then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our last person tonight is going to be Emily. Emily, you're unmuted. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Emily. Um, I'm from California. Um, I'm a Pisces, and I am very grateful for the love in my life right now, um, as well as my children. Um, and I would kind of like to leave it open to you a little bit. Um, but However, I am very much at a crossroads with my life. Um, I work as a self-employed housekeeper. Um, I am actually up right now with my foot. I have an injury to my foot. Um, so not really sure what I'm doing. I'm also a medium. It runs in my family. Um, and I'm completely untrained, self-taught. Um, I listen to your YouTube videos while I'm working, as well as other mediums like John Edward um, and John Holland. And... Um, I'm just trying to figure out what it is I'm doing right now and which way to go and how to do it. Um, I'd, I'd like to be able to, you know, have a stable financial um, place in my life, but I'm not quite sure how to get there. School does not set with me very well. Um, I'm a little bit of an outsider. I'm sure you understand that. Um, just trying to understand what it is I'm doing right now. Thank you. And I want to say thank you for being so candid and, and so complete in your explanation. Me, <laughs> I'm pretty honest. <laughs> I'm an honest person. Good. We need lots of them. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> First off, you know, it's very interesting because when you say you're a Pisces, anybody who's a Pisces, Virgo, Sag, or Gemini, uh, pay attention to this because here's Neptune. Sitting in Pisces here, right next to Chiron, which is the healing planetoid, things that you didn't know about yourself or that were hidden about yourself or your world, and if you're any one of those four signs, are in the process of being healed. There's an opportunity at hand for healing. Now, in your particular case, what you described to me is that, you know, you've all of your life, you've been a psychic, all of your life, you've been an empath, all of your life, you've been a medium. Um, and, yes, ma'am. You know, and, and basically, um, you know, you've been on the receiving end of, of this where, um, pardon me, but you've been, you've been, you, you pick things up to the point where, well, for example, uh, the whole, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, gonna go here, but the whole thing with the foot, okay? It's like, what do you guys have to do to force you to take literally the next step, okay? And- I thought about that, <laughs> yes. I thought about that, yes. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm you know, being forced. <laughs> I've got to say something for this whole group on here tonight. Not a whole lot of people came on tonight and asked about their careers, which I thought was kind of interesting because Saturn's over here and Saturn has to do with career and it's in the sign Capricorn that has to do with career and it's in the house that has to do with money. So everybody who's on here tonight 
is thinking about how to make more money in their careers or what career to switch to to make more money or, 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 you know, how to get in charge of what you're doing so that you feel more comfortable with it, how to climb up the ladder, how to be, how to be better at what you're doing. That's kind of a subtopic in this, in this group that never came out, which I think is kind of interesting because I thought that's what we might be talking about. Um, but no, very important to me yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, it is to everybody. Okay, so that's yeah. what I said. I'm really glad that you gave as much detail as you did because I'm looking at this chart and I'm knowing that everybody on this whole call tonight has the same questions. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing, though. All of your life, you and pay attention, folks. All of your life, you've been doing what you were supposed to be doing. You've been going to work to do the eight to, to five job. You've been going to work for other people who pay you money. Even when you've got your own business, you're putting, you're charging for your time and you're putting in X amount of hours to get that money. And because it's your own business, okay, part of the time you make great money, but if you're here, you're out of work and it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Okay. And welcome to the world of having your own business. And then, by, by the way, I'm not saying that that would be any different as a psychic, but you have mm -hmm. been... It's, it's like you've been in denial of who you are because you've been, I have been, yes. you've, been, you've been getting, you've been getting your money. You've been getting your support. You've been getting your income from what people told you you were supposed to do. So here's another one of those examples where what's been motivating you has been all external. And now because you hurt yes. your foot, the motivation has to be internal. So yes, ma'am. You could have been a psychic. You could still be a psychic. You could have been a medium or a channel. You could still be a medium or a channel. You could be a tarot reader. You do that too. They tell them you just started studying that. Um, you could also be a psychologist. You could also be a, psych a social worker. And you know, I get the whole thing about school because there's Pluto for all you Pisces, by the way, there's Pluto up here in the ninth house. None of you guys right now are feeling very good about school or going back to school. But here this is, you can make money, Saturn's in the money house, you can make money doing what you do best. Why can't you clean houses when your foot feels good and also do psychic readings and build that business up? Matter of fact, a lot of those people you clean houses for might want psychic readings. It's a good beginning. Okay, a lot of people don't. I did that, I did that for a while, Sandy, and I started reading people, and um, they were fascinated, and uh, some people were a little bit nervous, but um, there's nothing like doing a reading. It, it, it's like you're being, it's like you're floating. It's the most wonderful feeling, and I just want to keep helping people. And this is what you're um, doing. And, you know, the, the, so many people in the psychic field have trouble getting started because they don't know how to start a business. And, you know, exactly. it's, not like, it's not like you get to grow up and be a psychic and, and there's a, a, you know, there's a psychic store down the street that you're going to work in. Some people get to do that, but not too many. Most psychics have to develop their own business. How many people already have a clientele that's already developed? You're in a beautiful spot to be able to do this. So, you know, pay attention and do it and start to develop it. And, you know, you can either do the housekeeping and the psychic stuff forever if you like them both. Or, you know, you can, uh, you know, build up the psychic stuff and diminish the housekeeping until you're only doing psychic stuff. You know, you can, you can tip that slide if you want. The thing is, you have so many options here. Once you stop, you know, you get that attitude out of your head that you have to do it the way mom and dad told you you should. You know? I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I've, I've been feeling like I've, I, I, I didn't trust my ability. I didn't trust who I am and I'm starting to, and I, I'm just curious. I mean, um, how do I start doing this? How? Well, my, my I... suggestion, I always go back to this and I'm sorry. I sound like a broken record. I have a class starting in January. If you can, it's online. Anybody can take it in their own home. If you can possibly do it, I'm going to suggest you get on board with that class. And by the way, there are discounts for early enrollment. You can talk to Lisa about that. But yeah, I don't have a lot of money right now. That's the only problem while I'm not working. Um, that's a huge issue for me, and I'm just trying to find some stability. So, yep. um, well, like I yeah, said, I don't have a lot of money. Talk to Lisa about it, okay? I mean, okay. like a broken, talk to Lisa about it, because there are all kinds of ways of diminishing and, and, and p making payments over time, et cetera, et cetera, and she can work with you. She's my money person. Uh, she, she's my person who does everything. <laughs> Everybody should have a Lisa. We get about that. But back back to you. 
my suggestion, yes, you're naturally gifted, but, and, and I'm, you know, my guides are saying that when it's almost like when you're in a good mood and you're feeling up, everything just flows. And when you're in that yes. mood, you don't, you don't need, you believe me, you don't need to get any education. It just happens. But that's correct. But when you're not, you know, when you're feeling bad, when you're worried, when you're fearful, when you're working with somebody you don't know, so you're intimidated, or when you blah 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 blah, it's almost like it shuts off and you can't, you just can't find it. Okay, um, and you hate that feeling because then that makes you feel like you're not really who you are. You see? Exactly. Yes. Now, why do you take the classes so that that never happens? <laughs> Okay. Okay. I do have your first book. I do have your first book. Good. Um, and uh, and so, yes. I, I do have the, um, I, you know, I have all the books. And so some people can learn from the books. Um, I have uh, on YouTube, every one of my classes, the first two hours of the class is on YouTube. So you can get a feel. For I've them. listened to almost all of them. <laughs> I have is a lot of wonderful information. And the, and the online class takes you, you know, uses those videos. And each video is, a, I guess, about five or six hours long total. And it also has in-class, direct in-class uh, work with me. And that goes from January through May. And believe me, by the time you're done and there's a Facebook group and there are people to practice with and you don't feel like a square peg in a round hole, um, it, my, honestly, it's something you need to do. <laughs> okay. My only two passions are spiritualism and photography. There's nothing else I want to do and nothing. Yep. Absolutely nothing. And, you know, believe it or not, the uh, your, your, your psychic stuff is going to make you more money faster in today's world than your photography will. Okay. Are you, is that, is that, uh, so you're telling me that I definitely need to pursue this. Yeah. But you keep know. going. Okay. You, you absolutely know. And the other thing you have a yes. problem with is charging people. Okay. I do. I do. I do. Ha I, I was charging $80 a long time ago. I didn't feel that I should be charging anything because it was so natural for me. It didn't seem right to me, but everyone kept telling, but, but you're taking your time. You right. should be charging people. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. and, and you should charge them at least what you charge for cleaning a house. Okay. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I definitely will. Thank you. Hey, okay, good luck. And thank, thank you, you so much. Great questions. Uh, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. This has been a wonderful psychic hour. It always is. Um, you know, we have, I saw so many new people on here and I want to say thank you for being here. I, I love doing these things. I enjoy you folks so much. Um, a reminder, if you didn't get to ask a question or you have, you know, you didn't get your question answered that was the most compelling, um, then drop me a note between now and nine o'clock tomorrow night. I will answer that one short question. Um, also, just a reminder, remember, I have all those specials coming out in September. You have just until midnight tonight if you want to order the tarot program at half price. And uh, that's, it's an actual class. It's, 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 a, it's an incredible class. It will, it will teach you to be a professional tarot reader. Um, in October, I have the Psychic Protection Tips class coming out. And it's very inexpensive, very, very affordable will help those of you who need to learn how to protect. It'll be right there on your phone as a reminder or whatever your, your uh, electronic device is that you get your emails on. So you're going to be able to follow along with that uh, for a year straight. And there's more. I told you all about it. You can also read about it in my newsletter. If you haven't signed up for my newsletter, please go and do that. If you've taken any of my classes, um, please do leave some, uh, you know, leave some feedback. Tell us what you think about them. I would appreciate that. Likewise with my books, okay? Folks, you are wonderful. I'll be back next month. Remember, it's October 28th, and I'll see you then. Good night.